What's up everyone, it's Caddy with Money Vesting. So there was a recent report from FactSet that is now finally suggesting that analysts may be overestimating the earnings for the S&P 500 for 2023. So we are now starting to see analysts finally wake up to the fact that the macro picture is still very much unresolved and the S&P 500 forward or 2023 earnings estimates might just be a little too high. So I did a video, again, I mean, this is something that we have been talking about for quite some time, an earnings revision or an earnings recession might be on the horizon, but I did a video last week talking about how analysts are still sleeping because the earnings expectations are still much too high for the S&P 500. So for 2023, the bottom up EPS estimates for the S&P 500, uh, which reflects the aggregate median EPS estimate for calendar year 2023, which is the year coming up, um, is now sitting at $232.53. We have now come down from 250s down to 230s for the 2023 earnings per share estimates. And I'll go over the valuation, give you guys like a bird's eye view on the overall valuation for the market. We'll talk about which sectors are seeing the biggest cuts when it comes to the earnings estimates. Um, and we'll also talk a little bit about how analysts have been consistently overestimating um, over the last 25 years worth of S&P 500 earnings. So hope you guys enjoyed this video, find it helpful. If you do, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're just joining us for the first time. And of course, a link to our Discord and Patreon is gonna be down below if you're interested in joining us. There is a 16% discount. You'll get access to our buy and sell alerts, options alerts, trade ideas, private videos, ad-free content, and of course, a lot of our Google spreadsheets and PDF documents as well. And there is a 60% discount for Christmas on the bundle for fundamental and technical analysis courses. You get access to over 80 plus video lectures and you will become proficient in both fundamental and technical analysis. Coupon code CHRISTMAS60 is what you can apply till December 26th, after which both of these deals do expire. Uh, and we're doing this in observance of the holiday season that's coming up as well. So uh, over the past 25 years, going back as far as 1997 till 2021, the average difference between the EPS estimates at the beginning of the year and the final EPS number at the end of the year has been 7%, meaning that at the beginning of year, analysts have overestimated their earnings per share for the upcoming year by 7%. So in other words, if this year, uh, right now, as we stand in December 2022, if analysts are projecting that earnings per share for 2023 for S&P 500 companies is going to be $232.53, we can shave off another 7% from that earnings estimate because that's the average of that overestimation analysts have been like in the last 25 years. Now, analysts overestimated the final value in 17 of the 25 years and underestimated the final value in other eight years. So if you do the probability on that, 17 divided by 25, they have overestimated their S&P 500 earnings for the upcoming year, almost 70% of the times, and 30% of the times they've underestimated the actual earnings for the upcoming year. Um, so if one applies the average overestimation of 7% to the current 2023 EPS estimate of $232.53, the current, the final value of 2023 will be about $216.16. So if we apply that number to our analysis, right? So this right here is the entire spreadsheet. This is what I've also shared with all of our members for all, all of our Discord people. Uh, again, this is a very, very interesting bird's eye view of the overall S&P 500 valuation. Currently, we're trading at 4,000 points. So that's where we are. That's where the S&P 500 closed as of yesterday. And if you take a look at the 2022 numbers at $230 and 2023 numbers at 233, to be precise, $232.53, if I just include those decimals, right now, as it stands, the S&P 500 is trading at 17.2 times earnings on a 2023 basis because earnings right now are pegged at $232. S&P right now is at 4,000. You take 4,000, divide that by 232, you get an uh, P multiple price earnings multiple of 17.20. Now, if we look what happens if I update this number to about $216, right? Because that's what's going to be if we pretty much take into account the 7%. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to take this number and multiply this by 0 0.093 and we get to $216.25. And look what happens. We immediately jump the P multiple to 18 and a half. We go from 17.2 to over 18 and a half. And that is an increase of about uh, seven and a half percent. So that's exactly how much the earnings went down by. That's a seven and a half percent increase in the P multiple. Now, 
Again, th this brings back to our discussion is 18 and a half P multiple price earnings multiple on 2023 basis. Is that appropriate or is that a little too high? In my view, given inflation, given interest rates and how interest rates are going to be, that's a little much too high. 18 and a half times earnings on the S&P 500 in an environment where interest rates are going to be at closer to 5%, inflation's at closer to 7% is a little bit too rich for my personal liking, right? That's the overall valuation that we're working with for next year. Right now, they're still pegged for 17.2 because the EPS estimates at $230. And now look what happens where we were um, just a few months ago, right? We were at $250. And as a result, the valuation, even on today's prices, was at 16 times P multiple. 16, which was actually much reasonable than 18 and a half. But this is what happens, right? This is exactly what happens when earnings estimates come down. You know, the price earnings multiple goes up and all of a sudden the market starts to become a little too expensive again. And this is after the sell-off. This is after we've already dropped 15 to 20% for the markets. But this is how math works. Earnings per share, which is the denominator, if that keeps falling down, if that keeps coming lower, all of a sudden you're working with numbers that are much higher than what we had previously. So now all of a sudden we're working with 17.2 17 times price earnings multiple. And if that number comes down even further to 16, now you're working with 18 and a half times price earnings multiple for the S&P 500. So analysts, in my opinion, are now starting to finally wake up to the fact that, look, earnings are going to pull back. They're going to come down. And there was another report from FactSet that suggested that there has been the largest cuts on average due to the EPS estimates for the S&P 500 companies for the fourth quarter to date. So analysts are lowering EPS estimates more than normal for S&P 500 companies for the fourth quarter. Um, during the months of October and November, analysts lowered EPS estimates for S&P 500 companies for the fourth quarter by a larger margin than average. And the Q4 EPS estimate um, decreased by 5.6% of, of to, uh, to $54.58 from $57.79 from September 30th to November 30th. So we are starting to see more and more analysts kind of lower their estimates for the fourth quarter and for 2023 as well. And at the sector level, nine of the 11 sectors witnessed a decrease in their bottom EPS, a bottom up EPS estimates for Q4 2022, um, led by materials, 21% decrease, consumer discretionary, 12% decrease, comm services, communication services, which has your Google and Meta, down 11%, so that's a decrease in their EPS estimates. And on the other hand, energy was the only gainer, 6.2% increase on a year-over-year -year basis. That's the increase in EPS estimates. Um, and another thing that's really interesting is the decline in these EPS estimates recorded in the first two months of Q4 in the fourth quarter, which is October and November, was larger than the five-year, 10-year, 15-year, and the 20-year average for the fourth quarter, which is Actually, a very, very interesting case in point here that we are now starting to really see analysts revise their analyst estimates down to keep them more in line with what the reality of the situation is, which is we're probably going to see a decline in earnings for Q4. And in the first quarter, 23 is, is when I do see peak earnings decline, uh, meaning that we could see double digits decline in the first quarter, 23, on a year over year basis. Uh, and in 2023, we could see a very flat year for earnings. And again, if you come back to my spreadsheet over here, what we're really working with right now is literally no change. So 2022, about $230. That's going to be the expectation, about a 10.5% growth on a year-over-year -year basis. And for 2023, we're working with $232 so far right now. If you take into account 216, which is that 7% overestimation that we talked about, if you shave that number off, we're working with a 6% decline on earnings for next year for the S&P 500. Uh, and of course, if we plug in 216, then we're working with about 18 and a half times price earnings multiple based on today's prices, which in my view, I think is still a little bit too high. And if the S&P 500 were to be trading at, let's say 16, right? 16, because think about it, right? Logically think about it. We were just a few months ago, we were working with $250 in earnings per share, right? So if you plug in 250, 4,000, we're trading at 16 times price earnings multiple. This is the number right here, wherever my cursor is. This is what we were working with just a few months ago, 16 times price earnings multiple, right? That's appropriate. Now look what happens if I update this number to 216, right? All of a sudden we're trading at 18 and a half. Now for us to come back down to 16, we would need to be trading somewhere around here. We need, we need the price to be trading somewhere around these levels to accommodate for those lower earnings. And what is gonna be that price? that's sitting at 3550 to 3400, right? That's the S&P 500 price that it would need to be trading at in order to recalibrate down 
to 15 and a half, closer to 16 times price earnings multiple, the same valuation where we were just a few months ago. And nothing's really changed. In fact, the market's pushed up 15%. And now still after that, uh, the pricing becomes a little bit too rich considering uh, the earnings per share has dropped down. So that's something definitely to pay attention to. Don't sleep on this because I don't think a lot of people are talking about the bird's eye view, which is the overall market valuation. Uh, it's incredibly important. This is something that's what's going to be driving the market and that is earnings. Everything affects earnings. And uh, I'm going to be constantly kind of bugging you guys with this because this is important. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and a quick update. Um, and now we're starting to finally see some analysts kind of wake up to the fact that earnings are going to pull back. They're going to start to deteriorate. And uh, it's going to be very interesting where we end up for 2023 uh, for those earnings estimates. Right now, we're still pegged at 230, 250. So I'm going to keep that there. That's about a 1% gain. Um, just very, very small gain on a year-over-year -year basis. Uh, but we'll see where we end up for the markets in terms of earnings and, of course, the multiples as well. So hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it helpful. If you did, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're just joining us for the first time. And of course, a link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below if you're interested in joining us. And uh, there is a 16% discount for the Discord still available. And the 60% discount coupon code CHRISTMAS60 is available till the end of Christmas as well, December 26th. So you can take advantage of that, the first thing down below. As always, happy investing. I'll see you guys in the next video.